guys! Welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Well, March has begun and we are marching forth with the keto lifestyle. And in keeping with March and St. Patrick's Day, I am making a corned beef dish tonight and it is going to be Reuben casserole. So come along with me and let's get started. Corned beef has become traditionally associated with Ireland, although it is more an Irish American style uh, meat. But it's very popular on St. Patrick's Day. A lot of times it's corned beef and cabbage or something similar to that. I made um, cabbage rolls last year at this time. So I like making something that is a little bit in keeping with St. Patrick's Day. So that's what we are going to be making tonight. Reuben sandwiches are very traditional across the United States, especially on the East Coast. Um, you can find them in, in many delicatessens. And so this casserole is going to be mimicking that without the rye bread, of course, but we are going to be incorporating rye flavor. So let's go ahead and jump into the dish. So to begin our Reuben casserole, we need to do two things. We need to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. You're also going to need a 9 by 13 inch baking dish, so whatever kind of baking dish you have that is that size because this is going to be going into the oven. So the next step is making the sauce for our Reuben casserole. Traditionally on a Reuben sandwich, Thousand Island is used as the sauce on your bread. So we are going to be making a homemade Thousand Island sauce that will go on our casserole and we will also be reserving some later to put on when you serve. So you need to begin with three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise and I have mine in my little um, food processor. You don't have to have a food processor, you could just do this in a jar with a lid. I'm just doing it this way because I have it and that's how I generally make my sauces. So to this mayonnaise, I'm going to put a couple of squirts of no sugar added ketchup. If you didn't want to use ketchup, you could use uh, just about two tablespoons of tomato sauce, but I like the ketchup because it gives it just a tiny bit of sweetness to offset the bit of vinegar that we're going to be putting in. So I'm just going to put in about two squeezes. So I'm also going to put in a tablespoon of white vinegar, just regular white vinegar. I'm also going to be putting in pickles. Now you could, of course, chop up a couple of dill pickles if you'd like, about two of them. But I'm just going to skip that step and just use some dill pickle relish. Now make sure that it's dill relish and not sweet relish because there is a, a very large difference in taste and also carb count. So I'm going to put in about uh, an equivalent of two pickles ch chopped up. For me personally, I like paprika in my Thousand Island dressings. So I'm going to be putting in some smoked paprika, but you don't have to do that if you're not interested in that. But I have about a little more than a teaspoon here. So I'm just going to combine this. So there's our homemade Thousand Island dressing. I'm going to scrape down the sides and set this aside. So we have our 9 by 13 inch baking dish that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And into this dish we are going to put our corned beef. Now corned beef comes in one of two ways. It usually can come uh, fresh in the meat department, which is what I have here. I have a little bit more than a pound of corned beef, so I put mine in the slow cooker for about eight hours. Um, the one that I bought came with the already pickling, the pickling spices that is traditional with corned beef, 
and that's generally how it comes if you're going to be buying a fresh product. I just put mine into my slow cooker with some water to cover it and I let it cook for eight hours. Corned beef is a preserved meat. It is beef brisket that has been preserved in a salt and nitrate solution. The other way that you can get corned beef is in a can. Most of your canned corned beef will come from Brazil or Uruguay. Um, that is where most of it is um, produced. So you can find it as a canned product if you find that easier or if that's traditionally what you eat when you eat corned beef. So I'm going to be placing my chopped corned beef. I got it out of the water solution and I chopped mine. And I'm just going to be placing this in the bottom of my casserole dish. So I'm just going to spread that around with my hands. Now the next traditional step for a Reuben sandwich is sauerkraut. And so that's what we are going to be putting next onto our casserole. So I just have jarred sauerkraut. You can buy sauerkraut in a can. You can buy sauerkraut fresh in the deli. If you are a, a sauerkraut fan, you might have even pickled your own. So it's whatever your preference is. I have thoroughly drained mine in my colander and I have squeezed it with a small saucer to get it as dry as possible because it is a pickled product it can tend to sweat as cabbage sometimes does so you want to start out with as dry a product as you can and I'm just going to sprinkle this over my casserole you can use as much or as little as you like if you did not care for sauerkraut you could probably just use regular shredded angel hair cabbage that you had already cooked. If you wanted just a mild cabbage taste but you didn't want the pickled taste of sauerkraut, that could be an option for you. And you just want to try and get it in here evenly so that every bite has some if you are a sauerkraut fan. If you're not, of course, like I said, you could omit this and just use cabbage and then it would be more like a corned beef and cabbage casserole and not necessarily a Reuben. Okay, so I have put, I would say, about a cup of sauerkraut in here. Now at this point, we are going to put some of our Thousand Island dressing that we made at the start of the video and we're just going to drizzle that onto our casserole. We do want to reserve some for after it is cooked. And I'm just gonna kind of spread that around so that it evenly coats our Reuben casserole. All right, the next traditional thing in a delicatessen style Reuben sandwich is that it's generally placed on some kind of rye bread. It could be American rye, it could be Jewish rye, dark rye, but of course rye bread is not low carb or ketogenic. So we are going to mimic the taste of rye bread for this casserole by using caraway seeds. Caraway seeds is what is found in rye bread that gives it that rye taste. So I'm going to sprinkle caraway seeds onto my casserole. If you do not care for rye bread, um, then you could of course omit this step and then once again it would be more in keeping with just like a corned beef and cabbage casserole. So. I happen to like rye bread. I did not like it at all when I was a child, but as I got older, I really liked it, of course, before I began this lifestyle. So I have missed that rye bread taste. Rye bread is also used in things like patty melts and things like that, so it, it is a very traditional deli or diner type taste. So of course, just use the caraway to your taste, however much you like rye bread. I'm just going to sprinkle it evenly here. It is a it is a strong taste, so 
and I just found this over with the um, herbs and spices in the spice aisle. So, and it usually comes in a small container like that. Okay, so we have our corned beef and our sauerkraut, our Thousand Island sauce, and our caraway. So the next thing that we are going to need, the final step in a Reuben sandwich is traditionally it has Swiss cheese on it. So I have Swiss cheese slices here. It is difficult to find Swiss cheese grated. If you can, great. If you want to buy a brick of it and grate it, you can. But I find that buying slices will make it so that I can cover this casserole evenly in slices of Swiss cheese. So I am using six slices here because that perfectly covered my 9 by 13 inch casserole. So we are going to put this into our 350 degree oven and we are going to let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. And you can of course brown this under the broiler for a minute or two after we have let it cook if you want a little bit of brownness on your Swiss cheese. So I'm going to put this in the oven for between 15 and 20 minutes. So it's been in for 20 minutes and I am going to broil my Swiss cheese now. Okay, so there is our completed casserole. I did broil the top a little bit and I'm going to get this out and with all casseroles you do need to let it sit for a few minutes before you slice into it. But when I do that, I will get CJ a slice and we'll let him give us a taste test. Hi CJ. Hi. Well, it looks like you're wearing green. I guess I can't pinch you. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pinch back, no matter what, green or not. I will pinch back. <laughs> well, tonight we are having a St. Patrick's themed dish, and it is Reuben casserole. Yep. So dig in. Let us know what you think. Okay. Well, it's interesting the cheese on top. We had an interesting conversation about because you really can't buy shredded Swiss cheese, I guess that would defeat the whole purpose. Of it well, having the holes. The whole purpose of it having the holes. <laughs> hmm. It's not bad. You know what I think it needs? Salt. Which, ironically, you usually don't salt corned beef because it's a salted product, but... Really? Yeah. But cooking it in water can sometimes... I don't know. You know. Well, now by that, I taste it more salt with the right. meat. Right. Yeah, I can taste the salt. But, um, it's good. The, um... Thousand... The Thousand Island is good. The dressing. Maybe it needs a little bit more of that on top of it, but I mean, we, we just sprinkled some on right. that we had left, so. Right. Um, but it's good. I don't really taste that much um, sauerkraut. <laughs> Although I eat sauerkraut, but it's not one of those things where I remember to get it every time I get a hot dog or. Right. I'll eat it if it's, if it's there and I think about it, but I don't hardly ever think about it. But I really don't taste it. Okay. That much, it's not like it's really super it's not overpowering no i wouldn't know that it, it was even in there okay so i think it's good be interesting to see how people respond to it but maybe if you're missing a reuben sandwich yeah. if it was one of your deli favorites oh yeah that's what i don't do i don't really taste the um the caraway the caraway oh, maybe we should sprinkle some no, on i just say piece. that 
I don't really, I don't really taste that that much. Okay. Well, and it, you know, it might be like every other casserole where the flavors need time to meld the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause that is what I did like, I guess when you were talking about the Reuben, that is, I guess what makes the taste is the caraway seeds. Yep. It's just like any other white bread without yeah. that. And I know you sprinkled them in there, but actually no, I just didn't taste any of that bite. So okay. it's good. And uh, actually, I think the cheese slices actually did work out pretty good. I good. mean, it makes it even. Yeah, it kind of makes it look like bread or act like bread, maybe. Yeah, that was a good thought, too. Good. So, good job, baby. Thanks for all the hard work. Thanks for watching tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoyed this and that you have a wonderful and safe St. Patrick's Day. We hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We upload new recipes every Sunday, and we also have keto conversations on Wednesdays. And that's where we get together and we talk about different ketogenic topics. Sometimes we have keto food unboxings. We talk about things that we eat on this lifestyle, um, things that we eat when we're on vacation. So you definitely want to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on that content as well. If you need this recipe or any of our previous recipes, Everything that you need is found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. There is where all of our recipes are housed. That's the nutritional information, the ingredients. And I also like to talk about the recipe that I made, tips and tricks that I learned. And CJ also does a follow-up to his taste test. So you definitely want to head over there and get all of that information. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And we release photos there. Other people put photos of the recipes of ours that they have made. And it is a very nice way to join the ketogenic community. So definitely check us out there. And that is CJ's Keto Kitchen everywhere. We hope that you'll come back and see us again. And until that time, be well. Bye.